Hi there, track fans. I'm here with Brooke Pleger, a uh, hammer thrower from Bowling Green State University. Um, and uh, Brooke has made uh, quite a bit of a splash in the last couple of weeks. Um, two weeks ago, you went down to the Raleigh Relays and uh, describe your weekend and how that went down at Raleigh. Um, well, down at Raleigh, uh, uh, let's see. Um, the first throws that I took were both fouls, so uh, mentally I was a little shocked. I was not expecting to go out and foul my first two throws. Um, and after that, I kind of had to calm down so that I could get a throw in, so that I could make finals, um, so that I could try to better my mark. So going in for my third throw, I knew I needed to kind of slow down. And um, on my third throw, I won't... The funny thing is, it wasn't even it didn't even really feel like a good throw. I kind of slowed down my winds, and my turns were really slow, uh, or they felt slow. Um, but it ended up going 64, 76, um, and after that, I was able to make finals. Um, so mentally, at that point, I kind of had, like had a huge confidence boost, um, and I was able to go into finals feeling confident. Uh, and I tried to attack some of my throws in finals, which is why I ended up getting more fouls. Okay. But <laughs> just to uh, to clarify here, sixty-four seventy-six is uh, I think that was two hundred and twelve feet or two uh, yeah. two hundred and twelve feet, which puts you right about fifth or sixth in the NCAA, um, which made you seemingly come out of nowhere. <laughs> um, last year, kind of under the radar, you redshirted um, to, through two hundred foot ten inches. Uh, which is 61 meters 22, um, but because you're red shirting and that was pretty much, did you throw just one meet last year? No, I threw it multiple meets last okay. year. Okay, all right, but that's the one, that was, <laughs> that was the big the one. one. That, that was the one that I threw 61 at was okay. the Michigan State meet. Okay, and uh, whereas then as freshman, you threw uh, 55, 30, 174 feet 10 inches, which is pretty good for a freshman, but all of a sudden now you, uh, you had another big weekend, and now ranked number two in the NCAA, has got an automatic qualifier to the USA Track and Field Championships, and uh, is throwing some pretty big marks. Um, this last weekend on a five-team meet in Akron on Friday afternoon, went out and uh, it improved again. Talk about your weekend there. Um, at Akron, I knew I was going to be competing against people from the MAC, so I knew I was going to see Brittany um, and Jackie. Uh, both from Ken and Akron. Um, so going into that weekend, I knew I needed to kind of, if I wanted to keep my place, I knew I needed to compete well. Um, and it was also a nice chance to kind of get to throw in Akron's ring since that's where our conference meet is going to be. Um, so going into that weekend, uh, I was excited definitely to compete against those girls. Um, and, and that meet also, my first throw was a foul. Um, and then Brittany actually went in after because she was after me in the lineup, and she threw 64-something. <laughs> and uh, that actually really fired me up um, and got me, like, really excited to take my next throw because I knew if she threw 60, I didn't know exactly what her, uh, the uh, centimeters were, but I knew it was close to what I had thrown. Um, so I knew if I wanted to stay number one in the MAC that I needed to go in and have a better throw than that. Um, and my warm-ups weren't that great at that at Akron, like I was kind of slow and I wasn't really feeling the ring all that much. Um, so when I went in for my second throw, I was just like really fired up because um, I really like to chase people. I've always been very competitive, so um, knowing what I had to beat, I went in and I kind of like I just threw. And <laughs> once again, it was not like a very pretty throw. It wasn't a throw that I thought went very far. Um, and then when they pulled the tape in and they called out the number 6699, both my coach and I kind of looked at each other and we were just like, oh crap, like what the heck. Um, so, and then after that I had, and I think I threw another like 64 and the rest were foul, so. So you talked about the rest of the Mid-American Conference, um, that it's unusual, it's kind of a mid-major kind of, and in, in, in track and field it's not a terribly strong conference these days. But in the women's hammer throw, it is tremendously strong. Mm -hmm. um, so you've uh, some of the names around the conference who are uh, who are uh, pretty good. Uh, Shantae White, who mm -hmm. also redshirted last year, she was the 2011 MAC champion. Uh, you mentioned a woman from Akron, uh, Brittany Funk. Brittany yep. Funk. <laughs> okay, um, and uh, so 
here you are, you're one of the best in the nation, and you're worried about just being the, one, the tops in your conference, just, you know, a mid-major conference. Um, do you have any idea why women's hammer throw is such a big deal in the MAC? Why it's why it's so good right now and has been for quite yeah. some time, actually. Um, honestly, I I don't know. I feel like maybe it might do in part to the coaches um, that are in the MAC right now. Um, I know my coach uh, has worked very hard to uh, come up with a program for me that works. Um, and I know uh, Coach uh, Forrester at uh, Akron, um, he coached Stevie Large, who was uh, right now, I believe she holds the MAC record. Yep. Um, 2009 NCAA champion. There you go, yeah. So he coached her and stuff, so he knows what he's talking about with Hammer. Um, and Coach Fanger at Kent State also uh, is very knowledgeable of the Hammer. So I feel like right now, just in our conference, um, that's where the most knowledge is, is in the Hammer. So we're be able to produce better hammer throwers for that reason. It's been that way for a long time. Even uh, 40 years ago, the Mid-American Conference had some NCAA champions in the men's hammer throw. Yeah. Um, now, we talk about some big improvements, but and you've had big improvements every year, uh, but, you've, uh, but it's been progressive. It's, it's gone along. Um, talk about uh, your uh, athletic background. Um, before you even got into high school, what kind of sports were you doing before you, when you first um, The only sport I did from like the age of four or five until high school was gymnastics. I did gymnastics for, I did club gymnastics for a lot of years, um, and the only reason I even got into throwing, because when I started high school I was a sprinter, was my gymnastics coach. My club gymnastics coach was married to my high school sprint coach, and she apparently one night over dinner told him that I would be that I should try throwing he should send me over there because I have as a gymnast she said they have good body awareness so um, the next day at practice he's like Brooke you're going to throw today <laughs> and I was furious because I didn't, I didn't want to throw I wanted to run um, and he was like sorry that sucks you're over there anyways um, and then from that day on I never went back to sprinting I just picked it up and I wasn't too shabby, and I was like, eh, might as well just stick with it now, so. I was, to see a hammer thrower of your height and uh, think of you as gymnast is an interesting yeah. thought. Um, I but was the tallest gymnast in my club. Has that background, do you really think that it's uh, given you quite a bit of help, or? Uh... I think it has given me a tremendous amount of help, um, especially when uh, my coach gives me feedback and uh, tries to have me try like other things um, I feel like I'm able to kind of like understand what he's asking me to do and get my mind to tell my body how to move or how to manipulate in the way so that I can do what he's asking me to do, um, which I think a lot comes from gymnastics because I spent so many years doing that with my coaches in gymnastics. Okay. Now, if I have my information right, you threw 155 feet in high school mm -hmm. up in Michigan. Um, and uh, that's the Michigan high school record for women's hammer, is that correct? I guess. Okay, it's not a, someone else has beat it, I yeah, guess. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> uh, it's not a state, it's not a commonly contested event. It's not yeah. on the high school slate of events. Yeah. So how in high school did you get started in the hammer? Um, I joined a track club, and the coach in the track club was a hammer coach, and he started he was like oh you know let's try the hammer um originally i joined because i wanted to get better at shot and discus um but he was very passionate about a hammer so um i picked it up and i, I guess i just i don't know i clicked yeah. <laughs> and i there's, enjoyed it <laughs> there's a lot of a uh, lot of good programs in that uh, ann arbor area mm -hmm. uh for track clubs that produce some great hurdlers from mm -hmm. like uh tiffany of uh, tiffany porter now tiffany ophelia and so forth, but uh, it's it's a pretty strong program there. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, then you come here as freshman at Bowling Green, and after your freshman year, uh, there was a coaching change made mm -hmm. here, and there were a number of athletes that decided to move on to another university, which is completely understandable mm -hmm. when a coaching change is made. You've stayed here, and it obviously has worked out. Yeah. Uh, can you talk about that, uh, how things have worked mm -hmm. with your new coach, Matt Connolly, yeah. and so forth? Um, at the time when I found out the coaches were 
um, not coming back, I was extremely upset because the main reason I came here was for the coach at the time, which I learned never, you should never do that. Um, because coaches don't, obviously, they don't always stay. Mm -hmm. um, so I was pretty upset, but I love BG, and I loved the campus, and I loved, like, the community. I loved everything about BG, and I came here as, for uh, the school, too. Um, so transferring to me, I just, I really didn't want to do it unless it was something that I, like, absolutely had to do. Um, but I didn't feel like I would know if it was something that I had to do until I gave whoever came in a chance. Um, so when Matt Conley, my current coach, when he came in, um, I knew that if I wanted to really see if what his thoughts were, like if, if I could be successful under his coaching, I knew I had to um, buy into everything that he told me. Um, so that's kind of just what I did. I just listened to everything that he said, and I gave him his, like a chance to... When he first came in, he pretty much took... The technique that I had and kind of just like ripped it apart um, from like day one and just kind of was like he even sat down with me and was kind of like hey you know things are gonna change in your technique like you're gonna have to be patient things are gonna be really frustrating um, just be, be patient and work with me and and I think that it'll all work out um, I don't think at the time him or I either like I don't think we knew that it would amount to what it is now but um, we just I love the sport and he loves the sport and we're just able to kind of figure it out from there so yeah it definitely seems like hammer is a cult event the people mm -hmm. who like it they're really Ooh, they like it a lot they're yeah really into it yeah um okay um now you talked about uh, buying into the system and ripping things apart and starting over again uh i solicited some questions online and one of them that i got was actually a very very deep thoughtful question here um, so the question is, how Brooke thinks she's been able to do so well in the hammer being from the Midwest? And you say, why does that have anything to do with it? But it goes on. Typically, the Midwest produces some great weight throwers indoors uh, and lists off a lot of different places in this part of the country where we've had some great weight throwers indoors. But uh, when you come outdoors, they don't tend to do nearly as well in the hammer and in improvement is slow and things kind of tail off yet. It's been the complete opposite for you. Uh, don't want to say that you're too shabby in the weight throw, mm -hmm. but you definitely were not at the same level. You right. were just another, you know, fourth, fifth, uh, I don't mm -hmm. remember what you placed at the MAC yeah. Indoor Championships. But, you know, nobody would have expected, based on your weight throwing results, that this kind of hammer throw was coming down the line. Yeah. Um, so you're obviously far, far better in the hammer than in the weight. Um, so uh, the question is, how, why is that? Do you have any idea? Is it as an approach that you and Coach mm -hmm. Conley have taken or anything like that? Well, honestly, I practice weight during indoor season like once. Like I, 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 we take like maybe eight throws a week, if that. Sometimes not. Sometimes we have weeks where I don't even throw it at all, and I'll just throw um, some heavy stuff, but not weights. Um, okay. And I think a lot of the reason why uh, there's so many good weight throwers is um, kind of the way that Americans in general, I think it's kind of starting to change, but for a long time we taught, we've been teaching like strength, 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 like um, kind of pulling the ball, which works really, really well if you're a weight thrower. You can be really, really strong and kind of like pull the weight and end up throwing it super far. Um, but for me, I'm not really built. I'm not built to be like a great weight thrower. I just, I can't put on the weight. I can't keep, like I, my strength is, I'm strong, but I'm not to the point where I can pull the weight and it won't work for me. So for me, personally, I've always been an extremely technical thrower. Um, and so with my coach, he works a lot with me and my technique and even with weight, um, just focusing just so much on, on what I'm doing in the ring and um, I also, for a little bit in high school, I trained with Justin Welch, who is also similar, a very technical thrower. Um, so I feel like watching him, t his technique, and uh, kind of seeing that as like as I was kind of a starting thrower, helped me learn how to kind of understand my own technique and everything. So Matt and I work very hard. 
to focus on on that and I feel like um I feel like that's why there's you know people as far as like I'm not like the best weight thrower but um when it comes to hammer I have a much more technical background I guess or um much more technical throw which is in hammer you can't there's not really you can't really muscle it or it's not going to go anywhere it's uh so you're in short if I understand mm -hmm. things well you're basically taking the European approach yeah. which is yeah um, very much the Europeans have uh winter weight throwing uh, winter uh, throwing championships for javelin and discus and mm -hmm. hammer and they go out and it doesn't matter how cold it is doesn't mm -hmm. matter how much snow there is clean off the circle mm -hmm. and go yeah I definitely I throw hammer all year round um and when it's college weight season uh I just we take a couple throws of the weight but not the kind of more the bare minimum like the just the amount that I need to know that I can compete and and be competitive um so you basically you're doing as much to help the team as you can yeah, indoors indoors but, but outdoors is, hammer is definitely more where I can help the team now um we have a we have a dual a traditional dual meet coming up here on Thursday and because of your crowded schedule you're not going to compete um, which is okay because Bowling Green's got enough other hammer throwers that we can max out points there. Um, but um, the weather forecast for this week is not good. Yeah. It's April, it's the Midwest, if it's not raining it's gonna rain soon. Mm -hmm. um, now because you're out in the circle all the time, um, does rain and a wet circle, how does that affect things for you? Does it uh, make it harder? For me, after the last season, we trained in the rain so much that for me, um, it doesn't affect me all that much. When there's standing water in the ring, it doesn't bother me. If the ring is like half dry and half wet, then sometimes it gets kind of slick. Um, but usually, it doesn't mess me up too much, especially because at a track meet, you never know like what kind of weather you're gonna get. So we train in everything, um, and I just I try to just use it as experience and um, if I have to slow down a little bit for the day then I do um, but usually I don't let it I try just not to let it affect me at all okay so uh, well we're noting that this year's NCAA championships are in Oregon where I've heard that it rains occasionally oh yeah <laughs> um, and so if some of your competitors are from the west or mm -hmm. the south where they've never really dealt with a wet circle mm -hmm. that that could be to your advantage yeah okay um, all right, and uh, now I've got uh, a uh, I've got a sillier question I got from the internet, uh, which is has to do with people from my sport, distance running. I was a distance runner here at Bowling Green, where we uh, where uh, we'd occasionally huddle under the hammer throwers when it rained for protection. <laughs> um, and the question is, when eating a distance runner, which part is most tender? Um, I feel like it'd probably be the legs. Okay, the all legs right. Would be the most tender. Okay. <laughs> Um, now, uh, I probably you've had to go back and re-examine goals for the year over yes. the last couple of weeks. Yes. Um, I, Coach Connolly was telling me, hey, uh, I think we've got some big throws going. Can you look up what the all-time Mid-American Conference list is and so forth? But and I haven't talked directly to Coach Connolly since then, so I don't know exactly what his reaction has been. But uh, looking out now, what... What are you thinking about goals, or at least are you willing to, what goals you're willing to make public for um, this year? Well, he and I actually talked after this past weekend, and we kind of decided as far as like a number goal goes, um, at this point, we don't really want to like set one, because it feels like every time we set one, I just beat it. Any like it really, we, I just, like at the beginning of the season, we said, let's try to end the season at 64 or 65 meters. At the first meet, I threw 64.76. So after that first meet, we were kind of like, oh, I don't know if we should, you know, I don't really know where we should say we want to end up now. Um, and so then the next meet, I threw 66.99. And, and after that, him and I were just kind of like, we don't even know it, where to go from here. So him and I both agreed that uh, to win conference is a goal and to be uh, an All-American is a goal. Um, and whatever numbers those take, if if sixty six ninety nine is what I throw for the rest of this season, but I'm conference champion and all American, I'll walk away happy. If I 
throw 69 meters, but I lose, you know, I fall out at conference or I don't become an All-American or something like along those lines, I'm, it, the number to me isn't as important right now because I know as the years progress, that number is going to go up. So right now it's more about just kind of what meets our head. Okay. Um, and uh, have you even thought anything beyond this year at all? No. Okay. <laughs> I mean, other than, like, obviously as like in the future Olympics and everything, but right now I'm just focused on this year and what what's going to happen this year. Just got a puppy recently, uh, yeah. and, a, and I hear that you named the puppy Rio. I did. And I thought, <laughs> that, I think I know what that's all about. So, yeah. And that's the kind of thing that everybody who's done this sport at some time has sat back and dreamed about. But for some people, it's a little bit more accessible of a dream than others. Mm -hmm. And suddenly you've gone from, hey, it's a dream to, hey, uh, what if this actually actually happened? Yeah. You know, I, for me, I never had to worry about that. You know, <laughs> I, I knew I was, when school was over, I was going to go get a job and go to work. But, yeah. um, and that's one of the problems if you, uh, um, I'm not sure what your major is. I don't know what you're studying. Nursing. Uh, nursing, mm -hmm. okay. And that's something where you've got a tremendous amount of work coming your way in the mm -hmm. next few years. Yeah. Um, and so uh, balancing that and something that's very time consuming to do the hammer throw right, um, that's difficult. And then what if you're able to, good enough to be able to do something after high school, uh, excuse me, college, <laughs> after college. Um, so that's something that, that, that's, that can be a difficult challenge by itself. Um, all right. Well, uh, and your next meet, your me, excuse me, your next meet <laughs> is going to be when and where? Um, not this week, but the following week uh, at Mount Sac in California. Okay, uh, where you're probably not only going to be going up against some of the top collegians, but some of the top post collegians. Mm -hmm. So you're really going to get a chance to find out exactly where you stack up against yeah. the tops in the country. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, and like I said before, you've already qualified to the uh, USA Track and Field Championships, the first Falcon to do so since, I believe, 2001. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll be excited to see that. That's out in Des Moines at uh, Drake University, where they have a fantastic hammer throw facility with mm -hmm. permanent seating. Um, so uh, we'll be excited to see that. And, uh, well, thanks for your time. It's uh, been kind of crazy here. I actually had to uh, wait in line to interview a hammer throw <laughs> this first time in recorded history, All right? Okay. But uh, thanks again for your time. Yeah, uh, good you. luck for this year and congratulations on what you've already done.